Another thing I was fascinated with Nancy, I wonder if you could talk about what it's like to coach the dancers for a piece like this, where they, they're doing stuff that uh, elicits laughs from the audience, but then there's moments of just gorgeous, gorgeous dancing, but they're also, they feel to me like real individuals in the, in, in the solos on, in the downstage, and what it's like to get dancers to discover who they are in this material. Well, first of all, um, the work process in NDT2 is very much uh, about the dancers uh, teaching each other their roles. And the dancers uh, take great responsibility and ha have great pride in what they do and what they know, and they're very good at transferring that information. And then uh, where the coaching is concerned is also to, to um, stay aware of the, the nuances and the styles of many different choreographies. And trying to be looking for the precision of choreography without getting too militaristic, uh, perhaps. And to, to also keep um, looking for that personality and give them that freedom to uh, discover th many different things. Um, because we're not looking for the exact copy of the person that came before, although we, ha we are looking for the detail, but still the person that gets the information needs to uh, make it their own. That's a perfect segue into thinking about uh, Shut or Shut, the piece with Gertrude Stein reciting the poetry, because there, there isn't room for you guys to make choices about timing, because <laughs> she, she just keeps going. Can you talk about... Uh, it, had you seen the work and knowing that you were going to get to learn that and what the learning process of something that is so crisp and fast and what that was like to do? Well, first of all, you just need to know the text, really. Uh, then on top of that, you need to remember uh, the movements. And then at the same time, you need to listen to the voice as well, which is very, very important. It's a really challenging piece and it's, it's a lot of fun also. It's... Uh, it's one of those pieces that's very unique, and I think the only piece really in NDT2 that's that short. And it's so fast, like every time we do it, it's just different. And that's so exciting as well. And um, physicality-wise, yeah, you don't have room for anything, but you have so much space within the character that uh, you can develop it in that way. I think everything that she said is totally correct. And I just remember this, um, kind of breakthrough moment for myself was when Sol was talking to us in New York about um, about the voice and really listening because it, through the learning process you're kind of playing catch up the whole time because her voice just keeps you chasing her and at a certain point you feel sure about the movements and then and then you've kind of reached that plateau and then there's kind of this place where you are with her, you're with her voice, but it's, I don't, I don't know, there's this moment of breakthrough when you realize when the voice is in your body and you can hear her breath almost, or you feel like you're one with the track and it's not about being on the track or off the track, but it's just being the track. Um, and that's like, felt like a really special moment, especially when you are on that plane with another person. It feels really kind of like a high. NDT2 dancers are also very fortunate to work on a daily basis with the choreographers, uh, Sol Leon and Paul Lightfoot. And um, every time they come in the studio, they will always add a little nuance and always give a, another challenge. <laughs> and, and so that also keeps it very much alive. And they will see the people in front of them and, and adjust something and say, no, this works better for you. And that's also great for her the dancers to experience that, and in, it, in that way it also becomes their own. Speaking of challenge, in a completely different mood, going into Sarah, the um, Sharon Eyal and Guy Bahar piece, a compl after you've worked in the first piece to take up so much space, and then in the second piece to move very quickly, now you've basically got to be in one place in the stage. You're in a group, you're the soloist, but you're with the group. Could you talk a little bit about uh, what it's like for you to shift in mood so dramatically into that work? 
I mean, obviously it's a big challenge because they're so different from each other, so the movement quality is also so different. Um, normally, when your friends don't do shutters, you just have a bit more time to get into the mood of Sarah because it's such the opposite. Like, shutters really goes like... And all of a Sarah, it's really like whew, calm and mellow. Um, I mean, you, I think that's the great thing about being in NDT in general. I think we do so much different rap that you have to swap like this all the time. And that's why we're like chameleons. We swap from one color to the other color, and that's what we do. And um, we also train that way. So I think the longer you are doing it, the, the better you get in switching really fast. I think, like Imru was saying, it's about training in a way. Um, you know, during the day, we're rehearsing four, five, maybe six pieces for an hour, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Um, so within the day already, we're changing costumes in a way. And you know, when we get to a show that's two and a half, three hours, um, it's just kind of like a condensed version of a rehearsal day in a way, of course, with a, a bit more energy. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's, uh, it's also fun to be schizophrenic in a way. Um, and to really, like, when I take off that black and white leotard and then I put on this nude bodysuit, it feels like a treat to, like, chase yourself around in your head. This, this is a question about Sarah, the, the Sharon Eyal piece. If you could talk a little bit about um, the meaning, maybe, or if you don't want to talk about the meaning, maybe um, some things that she said to you in the, in the process of making the dance. It was a super special um, process um, working with Sharon was eye-opening for me and I think for all of the dancers in the room with her um, she is kind of like a human version of a mystical unicorn um, <laughs> and the information that she gives and the images that she um, relays to us feel like something from a far off universe. I can't say anything about a storyline or um, an ultimate meaning about the piece, but one of the things that stuck with me most about um, kind of how she felt as she got to step away from the creation process and watch the piece on stage was she felt like she was looking through a keyhole and you just get to see this brief moment in time and space with these people or these energies um, and then something kind of closes your your vision and then you know that's it it's like um, tasting a sweet and then it dissolves into your mouth you know it's it's a it's a moment in time it's a flourish um, and this is kind of one of the things that stuck with me the most I think also like um, movement wise she it's very much about the quality and finding the right images and we had material she could make she could have made a piece for two hours we had so much material uh, we kept going for days and days and days finding stuff doing different things throwing it away and all of a sudden it's just like <coughs> 10 minutes and she didn't want to do more than that she just wanted to have something that was just that that little, that little taste, and you want more, but you don't get more. I think it's also um, one of the wonderful things, one of the many wonderful things for uh, the NET2 dancers, for NET2, that they really, the dancers get to uh, really research movement, and they work with the choreographers, and there's time also, because time is important, to be, spend time in a studio, to research, and to, for the choreo choreographers to be able to make those decisions. Well, okay. I can do just 10 minutes and um, this creative process and, and all these different people that come in front of the dancers, it's uh, for them such an inspiration but also such a great learning process because it's not one style, it, so many styles and I see it always like there's so many different layers that they put on their body and they, it, it's enriching for the rest of their career. So, um, Spencer, I actually have been thinking about what it must be like 
for you in the last piece. We've seen, we see a lot of you in this, we see a, a lot of you sort of downstage center and then, then you're behind a moving wall. And it feels like the, uh, the choreography of that and, and the clarity of that is as important as what the more visible dancers are doing. Could you talk a little bit about what that's like? It's actually, it's funny because during the process, we were behind the panels so much during the creation process that we never really saw what happened in front of the panels. And so there was kind of this awe moment the first time you got, I got to step out of that and see um, what was happening and kind of how we contributed. Because when you're staring at the back of a panel, you just kind of think like, okay, I have to meet up with that person at this time and go over there and I have to like, this panel's loud, I have to be quiet, you know? Um, but then as soon, like I, I get to watch from the side sometimes and it's amazing to see actually that the panels make this world and that as a dancer kind of presses their hand up against the, the panel, the whole universe kind of shifts and falls away. It feels a little bit um, like that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio and the, the dreams where the streets kind of take up into the sky. And it's so nice to feel a part of that magic even if you're invisible. And maybe it's even more special to be a part of that and be invisible.